Hi, it's Andrew Palmer from Elegant Marketplace and somebody'shero.co.uk. Uh, we get a lot of questions uh, on the Facebook group Divi Theme Users from uh, a few of our seven plus thousand users. How do I move my development site onto my client's server? So I prefer to use a little thing called Duplicator. And I'm going to spend the next five or six minutes going through how I install a website from my dev server to a client server. I hope you enjoy. First things first, we've got a site here that's uh, been designed by Tammy Grant, who's a developer uh, that thankfully uh, sells her lovely themes through Elegant Marketplace. And I've installed that onto a dev server. So I tend to use my daughter's uh, domain for that because it helps me realize uh, that she's why I'm working so there you go so what I also do is uh, I go into my plugins and I add a new plugin I search for duplicator shouldn't take too long to come up and there it is so I'm just going to straight away install that file I activate the plugin and immediately go to it and just take a quick look at the settings there's nothing on here that you really need to change so let's just go straight in to packages now I have no packages and so all I'm going to do is create a new one I can look at my storage, tell where it can go, uh, what my archive files are, and what my inputs are for my installer. I don't need to do any of that, so let's just click Next. It'll scan my site to see if the uh, files are suitable. And if you've got a big site, this could take a little while. This one's about 38 meg. There's always a, a PHP setup that uh, comes up. And it just says there's uh, I've got open base directory is enabled and I should really um, cancel that but I know that it's going to be fine and I've got a few large files in there so it's always telling me to um, maybe not do those but actually this will work on a, a site of up to 200 megabytes in my experience but always go through the warnings but I know the warnings are okay um, and I can ignore those so I'm just going to click build package and that will do the building of the archive for me. So my package is now being built. I'm going to download the installer and I'm going to download the archive. Now typically if you're using Chrome on a PC or even a Mac, the zip file may say don't download this, discard it, but uh, that's just an extra security precaution that they've put in there. You know that this file is safe. So my next step is to go to my um, hosting provider and set up a MySQL database. So you should see something similar to this. This is a um, situation where I've got uh, all my hosting reseller on Heart Internet uh, UK. And uh, all I've got to do is set up this MySQL database. It's very, very easy. And we might as well call it Engage. generate the password and create it. I then navigate to where my database uh, username and password is and I would save it then to a notepad. So now all we have to do is hit the home button on the hosting, go into the file manager, uh, go to public HTML, add a new folder, let's call it engage uh, as soon as you would be doing this, you'd be seeing uh, a very empty um, public HTML file. Obviously, this is my dev server. And all I do is I go to upload, choose my files. And there they are. Upload. Shouldn't take long, especially with the magic of video editing. So that upload's been completed. I then navigate to my installer file, right click, 
and open in my website. Now, my local host is always there, and I'm gonna connect and remove all data. It's just a habit I've got into, just in case I want to overwrite uh, an old database. So I then navigate to my username and password, copy those, pop those into the database name and the database user, and then obviously the password as well. Test the connection. Let's see that it's all there. We've got a success, so that's pretty cool. And I will just, I have read all warnings and notices, tick that box. And I'm gonna run the deployment now. And that's just a warning to say that you've, you will be overwriting your database. I know that, I'm doing it. So that's that. We've got uh, the site installed. I'm gonna test the site. And you can see it's in another folder of the rihannaparma.co.uk called engaged, engaged rather, and it's all there. So let's go and have a look at the admin. Should give me the same login details. And if it doesn't, you can always go into your WordPress database and amend your user details in there. Now what I like about Duplicator particularly is that it says, take me to the cleanup page. So you can just hit a couple of things, just delete the reserved files, that's like temporary files in the in, in installer. If they're there, it's saying it's not found them, so that's pretty good. And I wanna clear that build cache because there will be something um, in the WP Snapshots temp, so that's fine. So everything's cleared. Let's go and have a look at the site. First of all, uh, what we want to do is just make sure that the site is all there. It's great. Let's have a look at reading. It's all great. The right home page has been set up. Let's have a look at the permalinks. Yeah, it's all done to uh, post name, so we save those. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you transfer one site from one place to another place using Duplicator. And I hope that you've enjoyed this little tutorial on Duplicator, a very easy, free to use plugin. Thank you.